Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends, and welcome back to a lunchtime special of a Sipsy's Town. We've just announced, uh, we, we knew a little bit about it last night, we just announced we have signed Richard Keogh from Blackpool for an undisclosed fee on a one, not a two, a one-year deal. Uh, seventh signing of the summer, so as Talking Town is for the fans, by the fans, here we are going live. Uh, and we like to really sort of push our boundaries here at Talking Town and you know, go into new territory and keep pushing. We did a little bit of it last year, so I'm trialling it a little bit again. It's ITFC Twitter Spaces, so we are simulcasting this broadcast on uh, Twitter. If you are there, do say hello if you can, or let me know how it sounds, how it goes. Literally, uh, just trialling an idea I had while, um, while I was washing my hair in the shower, actually. So let's see how that goes. Lots of chat already going on on our YouTube chat. So if you are on Twitter and want to get involved in the conversation, do jump to YouTube. And of course, we are live again this evening, 8.30 for Talking Town's match day preview. We'll have a little bit of Colchester reaction, but we'll focus predominantly on Milton Keynes Dons coming to Portman Road on Saturday when we have an MK Dons fan. Colin joining us live on the program. Let's go ahead and bring in... Um, a man you will know, a man that many love, many don't, but I, I, I'm quite fond of him. A bit like, uh, a bit like mold. It is Richard Moss. Hello, it's sir. Mold. Well, it's you're like growing mold. on me. You're growing on me. Well, there you go. How are you? I'm very well. I, I think we're going to come at this today from two different directions, but let's see. So, Richard Keogh announced t today. Before I get to the chat and, and some comments, what are your thoughts? Now it's all. Now it's all announced. Yeah, I, I said last night, mine. I think it's uh, quite an astute signing. I don't think he'll play every week. Um, he's what thirty-six now. I just looked. He's played. Look, he's played nearly seven hundred career games. Uh, he's an experienced player. I think we're about his twelfth club. It's interesting, Martin. He started at Town, didn't he? When he was eight years old, he did. Um, yeah, so yes, he did. It's sort of gone full circle with him. He wanted to move back this way because his family are in Essex. I know people say about look, the trouble he had at Derby. I think everyone should go and check out. There's a really good article on The Observer. I'll there share is. it on my, on my Twitter later. So, I, look, I think it's a good signing in and around the dressing room, you know, with the youngsters, Martin. I, I know I know people say about Corey and Darber, but I think we spoke about him last night. I don't – obviously, Kieran doesn't think he's ready, you know. But, but does Richard Keogh go straight into the team on Saturday? I see a little bit on Twitter someone saying – Mike the Fisherman's going to lose his shit because he said he could slide in on that right-hand side instead of Genoa Danassian. Who so, said that? Uh, I won't tell you who, but I'll tell you off air. Okay, sorry. I didn't realise it was it was that level. Um, look, I've often said the front, the, the, the back three that started the season will not be the back three that ends the season. That, and that's not changed whether it's Richard Keogh or Corey and Darbo or, or, or Christian Burgess, Cameron Burgess, rather. Christian is a much better defender at Portsmouth. Was at Portsmouth. Um, I caught myself. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I still don't know which which Humphreys we've got though, Adam or Cameron. Um, but I don't know, Rich. This is an interesting signing from my perspective. Yeah, uh, it's, look, it's going to divide opinion. I think mine. Not everyone's going to be on board with this one, but I think what he brings to the table, you know. I, I, but I didn't know we that. lacked those attributes. Like I've never watched Richard Town over the last two years and thought. If only we had a little bit more now at the back. Like last night, for example. Once again, it's about breaking teams down. Now, I think it's really important from my perspective to break this into two, two different avenues. One of it, one is the right now, and the other one is we have the window still still ongoing. So let's wait and let's see before you really judge where you are with this transfer. For the right now, for the right right now, it's another centre half. It's a fee. Don't care if it's a thousand pounds. It's or whatever it may be. It's undisclosed. It's a fee, not my money. So I'm not particularly bothered by that. But it's a, a player that, again, is at the back end of his career. You've got a young player in Corian Darba, League Two Player of the Year, three year deal. If he's not good enough to play the minutes that you expect, Keo, unless he is going to come and play in that right side of the three, it's a little bit of a strange one. Then of course you you go, okay, seventh signing, another defender. Still not got that perhaps number 10 for many, that yeah. striker. You, you, so you, you, you're solid at the back, but you still can't break, yeah. you know, a, anything down. Well, we see it last night, didn't we? I think that was just a, that was a little preview of what you're going to get with a lot of teams coming to Portman Road this season, mine. You know, they had like li literally everybody apart from Frank Noble behind the ball. We couldn't break them down. But 
Look, Keo, like Carl says in the chat, he's played 30 games last season in the championship for Blackpool. They, their fans were a bit sort of meh when he signed there. Now, yeah. they're really sad that he's leaving. You know, so that says a lot to me that he's gone there and he's, he's sort of showed them what he can do. Too much chat in the, about Norwood in the chat there from people. Oh, we should have kept him. He's not here. He's placed for Barnsley now. Move on, everybody. Yeah. And, and, we, and we had the same issues with James Norwood in we couldn't break anything down. So he unless he suddenly found two or three yards of pace that he didn't have last year, he, he isn't he isn't the answer. Let's get a couple of comments from from the chat. I'm just trying to while I'm doing this, trying to get uh Twitter spaces to be to be operational. So if you can hear me, fantastic. If you can't, I do apologize. Well, you oh, can't. Multitasking. You won't hear me. So what am I apologizing for? Uh, Mike Baker, nice one, chaps. Great signing experience. Game management around our young defense. Bang on. He's been there, done just what the doctor ordered. A decent striker and we're good to go. That's kind of what where, where I am with this at the moment in the sense of a decent striker and it's great. If we now struggle to get anything yeah. else over the line, for whatever reason, it's kind of like you know I don't know I'm not I do I'm look, I do get right. where people are coming from on on this is we need that man who's going to score goals and we've signed a defender when mm. a lot of people are probably thinking we probably don't need one so look I, I I totally get what people are saying Martin and if we come to the end of the window and we haven't signed a striker I will be worried I think we see last night I we agree. Didn't have Dapo, Jackson, we know what he brings. Uh, John Jules, he's probably an impact sub. Do we create enough? Probably not. Probably um, not. No, no, that's right. I see someone, I think this morning on Twitter, 58 chances we've, well, 58 attempts we've had over the three games. Now, yeah, you could dress that up whatever way you want. How many real clear cut chances have we created? We did last night. Cameron Humphrey's missed two that he should have scored. But yeah, getting back to Keo, I think, I think it's a, I think it's a win-win situation. I really do. Even if he plays 10 games, it's it's not just what he's going to be doing on the pitch, Martin. It's what he brings no. to the training ground on a day-to-day, -day, you know, around the younger players. Corey and Darba, fair enough. He's done it in League 2. I was talking to Carl Brooks this morning. Aaron Drinnan's done it in League 2. Wasn't good enough in League 1. Ollie Hawkins is playing centre-back in League 2 for Mansfield. Wasn't good enough in League 1. So, Kieran and the, and the coaching staff have probably they've seen in pre-season... And he looked a bit ropey in a couple of them games. They've probably Pal it was Palace, though, to be fair. Well, Colin said he didn't look that great against South End. So they might be thinking it's look, it's another loan move for Corey. But we did say last night, then you get to next season, then say we get promoted this season, which we all want to do, you get out of this league, then you go to the championship. Is it going to be a case of he's not ready for the championship? So I, I can, see it. I can yeah. definitely see it from both sides. I, I really can. It's like You've got him at the club. He's how old's Corey now? 21, 22. Sooner or later, you've got to have a little bit of trust in him and say, right, we're going to trust in you. And yeah. obviously, at the minute, I don't think they do. I, I do think, and I'm not often one to, to subscribe or prescribe to uh, an older player coming in automatically has to be always going to bring going to bring experience and a coach on the on the field because not all older players are that way inclined. So just because he's got an age on him doesn't mean he's going to be that way. But let's anticipate for a moment that he is going to be that way. He can, I can really see a benefit benefit for someone like Luke Wolfenden because I think they play a very similar style. They're they're very similar built from memory, from what I remember seeing with Joe Keogh in, in, in a derby shirt. So he really could, you know, sit and impart some wisdom on, on, on a young on a young mind like Luke Wolfenden, who last night we saw snippet stepping out of that back 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 two back three again with the ball. George Edmondson. I'm interested to see what happens there because did they play together at Derby? Am I right in thinking that? Is there a partnership already built there? I think he no, he'd already left then, hadn't he? He'd, he'd already had that, left. That, so that, that trouble, and then that was the season they got relegated when Edmondson was playing, and he'd already gone. That's a shame, but that's an interesting one to, to, to see again. Can he impart a little bit of wisdom on 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 Edmondson, who is a young mind himself? Back three, I'm really quite. It's intriguing now because, as someone said in the chat, he's not coming potentially. To just make up the numbers and and you know put his feet up and use that Zimmer frame as Mike the fisherman said last night on the show. So who who's in? You think the Nashians in 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 in? in well, threat, I, I, I'm not saying that. I just see someone say that on on Twitter that it could be he comes in on that right hand side possibly possibly, but he's fit to go. He's had a pre season. He he might need a couple of well we we 
there you go, Martin. If we'd won last night, he could have had another game in the in the Carabao Cup. I think we've got a Papa John's game coming up against Northampton soon. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see how it plays out. But we will, I, we will. I think will. Is, got, he, is he get does he get on the bench Saturday? I don't know. I don't know. With five subs, I, you know, um, sorry, with uh, with with the use of five subs, which obviously means there's seven on the bench. Is that right? You would have liked yeah, to seven. potentially yeah, yeah, see him slide in there. Um, I, it, hey, hey, you know, if if he arrives with the ability still that, as Matty Willis says here, thirty-one champ appearances last season, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then fantastic. But if he arrives and it, and it's the Jonathan Douglas type back end of the career, or James Collins, James Collins was a really good signing, but he couldn't keep fit. You know, he had injury yeah, problems. So, but for every James Collins and Matt Elliott, you've got an Ivor Ingram Arson and a Jonathan Douglas. Yeah, just because he's you know played in the championship last year doesn't mean we're getting. The Richard Keo that we all anticipate. The Blackpool fans are really impressed with him. They were really impressed with him. So yeah, they got they're Blackpool. That's that's low standards. But Blackpool are a championship team, and this is what we all need to get our head round. Yeah. Whatever yeah. we say, we are it's in true. League it's One. True. Everybody, we're not in the it's championship. True. We want to be in the championship, but we are a League One team. And until we instill, like last night, go back to last night, mine. Everyone's like, some people are. Oh, we're not bothered. It's the cup. Winning mentality. We still have not instilled that winning mentality throughout the club. And if Keo comes in and helps with that, you know, he's a winner. Sam Moore's is, a winner. But yeah. we, have to, we have to instill it and don't just say, oh, it was just Colchester in the cup. We're not that bothered. It was another game to win. You could have gone mm. two games back to back. Then you've got another home game Saturday. But instead, we've had a defeat and we've probably seen a lot of players now who probably had an opportunity last night and probably Kieran thinks, yeah, you're not quite ready. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have to think Kieran has identified something within the makeup of the of the squad because it is a departure from dashboard, from player trading. Because this this is the yeah. player that's not arriving uh, with, with with any any sell on value. He is not going to be that player that arrived for for a, for ten thousand yourself for five million. Is at the end of his career, uh, whether that's a year, two, three, whatever it might be. So it's got to be something that Kieran's like for me identified in the squad the makeup. It caught me on the hop a little bit yesterday because I thought, defensively, do we really need another player? But obviously, like you say, Kieran's seen something, Martin. But like Matt did say, there's a bit of a link there with Lee Grant, Martin, from Derby. So he's played yeah. with him. He knows him. So it is quite an interesting signing and it'll be quite interesting how it sort of pans out through the season, where he comes in, what games he it plays. It really will. It really what role will. he's got to yeah. play. I think, I think it's a real interesting signing. I, yeah, I agree. And it's one as I, as I started at the start of the show. Uh, you know, you can only, from my perspective, really sort of look at it and judge it at the end of the window when you yeah. when you know what you've finalised and what you have. Because right now it's a uh, oh, we need a striker, but then tomorrow we could be sat here doing a transfer talk show discussing a George Hurst or a, or a whoever, and then you look a bit you know egg on the face, you reacting in that way, and then twenty four hours they sign somebody else, but then you could struggle. As Ipswich Town have done, it's not not the old regime I know, but we have struggled in the past to get deals over the line, particularly in the forward areas. David Healy springs to mind. Christ, like how how, how long did that drag on? Um, he was here, then he wasn't here. Charlie Austin lost the pen. Um, sure. <laughs> I mean, you could go on and on, right? It's but... interesting. I'm looking at the comments here, and you've got a lot of people are saying he's a really good sign, and you've got people a bit like he's oh he's too old. Do we need another defender? And it's this is football, what it is, Martin. You know, you've Absolutely. it's a game of opinions, and it's great that you're like so and so, he's a good sign. No, he's too old. Let's wait and see. Like Lee Anderson said, he's only concerned there is his legs might go quickly. Yeah, but he could, yeah, go, yeah, another, he could go another two years, so you don't really know. See, I'm, I'm a little bit with, John, with Jonathan Spring, and Jonathan's a, a posh fan for those that uh, don't know, so they, they know this league. Like the back of their bloody That's hands. That's why when we've done our predictions, I had them in the top two because, yeah. They go to the championship, not quite good enough. When they're in this league, uh, Mike sent me, um, I think, their team from Saturday, and he was saying like, how much firepower they got. They'll always score goals, Mike Clark Harris. They've got Marriott, uh, Ricky J. Jones. They'll always score, Peter Russell. So they'll be up the top of this league. And I, I have said that. This is the only thing that worries me, that mm. we're not going to be clinical enough. We're not going to be prolific enough. We will pass teams to death, like last night. 586 passes. I know we're only playing Colchester. So much of the ball, but you have to have that cutting edge. You have to have that cutting edge in this league. You can't. You can't say that sentence anymore after getting beat. I know it's only Colchester. Oh, 
they beat us. That you know, if you want to, if you're going to say that sentence like that, then it's a double disrespect for us because we we didn't do enough to, to, to well, win the game. Same did, old with that cup, isn't it? Well, every cup, every cup. Jonathan Johnson yeah. says in League One, defense ain't that important as you get clean sheets because most teams ain't got a good striker. Spend your money on a striker, which is kind of my thinking with the left back. You know, you don't get promoted or relegated because your left back isn't very good. You get promoted or relegated because your forward line isn't very good. And right now, our forward line isn't shit up, to put it for a better way. Well, you've got the Dapo, and, and to me, that's about it at the minute, because John Jules is a sub, isn't he? Impact mm. sub. Good point there from Carl Brooks about Thiago Silva. I know he's... It's not, he's... though, because Chelsea had, you know, they also spent £100 million on a striker. Yeah. Okay, so, so I do yeah, as a Chelsea that. fan, you can say well, well, if you're not if you're not sure. conceding many, this is this is what I I think. If you're not conceding many, football's it's an it's an easy game, isn't it? Don't let any goals in. Absolutely, score one goal, you win the game. But we I, we need to score more goals. I think we know. I think look, Kieran knows that. He's Kieran isn't yeah. stupid, Martin. He's a real clever he? guy. He no, will know what he will know what we need, and it, it's sometimes if it Absolutely if it takes strong. another couple of weeks to get that striker in and we have to be a bit patient so be it but at the minute the Dapo one injury away from him Caden uh, Jackson up front no well, we'll, we'll talk we'll obviously different. speak a lot about Caden tonight because we'll, we'll do the Colchester reaction then but I, I didn't think I don't remember too many clear cut chances again for our centre forward we don't create clear cut chances for whoever is playing centre forward you wouldn't have noticed him really first half him and um John no. Jules didn't really get in the game. I know John Jules is a little bit of a different player. We didn't get behind him, did we? We didn't stretch him. We didn't use his no. pace. No. No, 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 we didn't. So, we didn't. You're absolutely right. Uh, so, yeah, like I say, I think it's got, it's got to be something. It's, it's Mike, Mike's part, very... Yeah. Mike, Mike, for someone with a level one coaching badge, I think he thinks he's coached at the ice level. Easy. Easy. I mean, no, it's oh, a opinion. Oh, it's oh, it's it's a he waited 70 minutes to change things. Cameron Humphrey scores Let's... two goals. We're winning um, at half-time and the game's a lot of difference. And what a great comment that was from um, the fisherman at full-time. Cameron Humphrey should be playing instead of Connor Chaplin, Martin. I nearly fell over when I heard that. I literally, I asked everybody around me, what did he say? What did he say? What did he say? Because I couldn't quite believe I'd heard the words. It was unbelievable. It still is. I still can't quite grasp the nettle. Um, but that, that said, Mike was first on Cook. This time last year, you would have said the same thing about Cook. You, I'm not going to sit here and sort of, you know, say no, anyone's so right or wrong. We know that. Right we know it's wrong. really different. Let's not, let's not get too carried away. We've, we've won one game and drawn one in the league and we're four points and we've got three more mm. points than we had at this stage last season in the league. We're out the yeah. cup, which we were last season against Newport. And have a similar game, Martin. Have a similar game. But the Newport game was similar where we yeah. dominated possession, didn't we? But we, we just didn't score. Same Some things never change, do they? That's the thing. Some things never change at Ipswich Town. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Uh, we've got Lloyd. Lloyd, what are you making a signing today, my friend? Uh, I said in the comments, I said it would be a good signing. Um, how old is he again? I think he's like 35. Six. 36. 36. Um, yeah, so I can only remember when he played at Derby, and every time he played at Derby, he was pretty consistent and played very well. Um, but yeah, I think it'd be a good signing. Uh, McKenna and must have noticed something that he didn't like about the defense, so he's brought that extra cover in. So we don't know what who what that is, but we'll, but I think yeah, he'll be a good signing for us. You see, I, I what, what do you make of the of the Mowbray comparisons, Lloyd? Because I personally. I feel sick every time I hear the words. It's our new Tony Mowbray because Tony Mowbray was a special <laughs> defender and. All due respect, this is Richard Keogh coming to a League One football club, completely different. To you have to Tony remember, Mowbray. it's a different era of football as well. So, Tony Mowbray didn't play out the back, he just hoofed it to Rose Ed. So, it's a completely different era of football. You can't really compare them exactly. Well, just say to Clogger, I think that's a bit disrespectful. Tony Mowbray just lumped the ball. Don't think so. Not in the team that Burley played, he didn't. No, absolutely not. He's, it, it was the talk of the organizer, the, uh, the 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 general on on on. The, we saw that because he went to assistant manager straight away, didn't he? So he's, you can see the the the, the link there. Uh, I just I just think it's a little bit you, you're clutching when people say, "Oh, it's our it's our new our new Tony Mowbray." You mentioned Lloyd before I let you go. Um, I want to make it a short show because I'm going out for lunch. 
Where are you going? I don't know yet. It's my wedding anniversary last night. Oh, well, yesterday. Yeah, no. And obviously, I was with what you lot. Spend what way to spend it at Portman Road watching town get well, I got, I got, I, I got, yeah, well, you know, there was, <laughs> someone got a dick in. Um, <laughs> well, uh, so anyway, sorry, Lloyd, back to you, back to what I was going to ask you there. You mentioned, you know, he's obviously identified something in, in the back line. Could it be that, you know, Richard Keogh is going to bring in a culture, a standard and a winning mentality, that, that winner's mentality that perhaps he's identified as not, not, not currently in the makeup of the squad? Well, we won't know until we find out when he first plays because, you know, everyone expects like the, old, the more older players to come in and then start coaching and inf giving everyone enthusiasm. But not every player is like that. Not every normal person is like that. So it, mm. it completely depends, really, until we have to see. And I have I heard yesterday, apparently, he's only come here to get his coaching badges at the end of oh, his career. And where, did you hear that from a good source? Or is, is that uh, just a, you know... Yeah, it was chit -chat. Just, uh, just chit chat, but chit -chat. I, I, I don't know yet. I have no awesome. idea. But we'll have to wait till he plays his first game. I don't think... I, he, think, I think he'll make well, the bench. Well, go on, Lord. I've got a point for you, Lloyd. I think, personally, when Keo gets in the team, right, if he stays fit, I think he'll stay in there, mate. I reckon as well, because I said I don't think he's just come here to sit on the bench. No. Well, I I've often said the back, the back three won't be, won't be, won't be the back three at start to see. I've said that, I'll keep it, I'll maintain uh, it. I, I, don't, I don't think he'll start Saturday. I think he'll do the next game. Possibly. Well, you never know. You know, Wolfie dealing with Frank Nublé last night. You, you can wake up, you know, bruised today, Wolfie. We know that. He's a... It's Nublé. It's Nublé. It's not Nublé. Yeah, it's, Come on. I'm on this with Sky Sports. What can I say? What can I say? <laughs> Lloyd, we, we appreciate you. Look after yourself, yeah. my man. Um, Frank Newblade. I love Frank Newblade. I think he's absolutely brilliant. I was going to say Newblade as many times as I can now. Um, yeah, Newblade. General. So, talk, talking of generals, I've got your general coming in. Who's that? You know who that is. It's Mr. Brandon Carter. Yeah. Hello. He's not Hello. Who is this boy? He's, he's always got his son out on. Are you at work? Uh, on my lunch break. Of course you That's are. going back in are. about uh, 20 minutes. Well, make it quick then, my yeah. man. Richard Keogh is in the door. Seventh sign-in, seventh heaven. What do you make of it? I think he's a leader, isn't he? I think um, you've now got each each area of the pitch covered in terms of leadership. You've got Aluko, who, as much as I know that we have, everyone has different opinions on whether he should be starting on the bench or not in the squad at all, based on his ability and his output, I suppose. Um, he is a leader. He's someone good to have around young strikers, which we do have. You know, we have Torres John Jules, he's young. You have players still coming through. I think a lot of this a lot of the flair players we do have, they seem like in terms of their personality around the game, they need sort of a, a figurehead to, to be around. I think Luco's that. You have Morsey in midfield, obviously speaks for himself. And we have been lacking that a little bit in terms of the centre halves we have. Obviously, I think um McKenna touched on it in his interview yesterday. Our oldest one out of our centre-back uh, department was Burgess, and he's only 26. In terms of being in the game, that's, that's still um, still the start of his career, really, isn't he? He's, he's not he's not even reached his peak yet. So I think it'll be another body. I don't personally see the way we play. I think we're playing more of a four of the back anyway. So I think that Danassian, I'd be surprised if we dropped Danassian because I think then you are losing that little bit of uh, adaptability that we have already on the pitch. Obviously, McKenna talks about not playing formations and filling the right areas and spaces. And I think if you did drop the Nassian for Keo, you're losing the ability of maybe pushing Burns further forward if we want him to play more as a right winger during the game and have the Nassian right back. Because I've seen him, Ipswich have uh, Christoph Berra isolated at left back and Chambers isolated at right back. I didn't like that. So um, no. I certainly don't want that again. But I think it's a good sign, and I think everyone on here, I don't think there's any need to argue about it in the comments. I think everyone knows that we, we need a striker, if not one, and then two. But I think that we've got to look at this transfer in isolation and realise that it's filled a void in terms of maybe more leaders that we need, more people who have been there and done that to get them yeah. in the squad and to, to push the squad on, even if he's on the bench, even if we pick Burgess on the bench ahead of him as our back up centre half, because that's going to be a discussion as well. If you do put Keo in the squad, someone has to miss out. And obviously yeah. the first couple of weeks we've seen some big names miss out, although the way that some of them played last night, I, I'd, I'd struggle to fill a bench with some of the performances that we had last night. But um, 
I think in isolation, it's a good signing. It's a leader off the pitch, around the training ground. And if you get in those games against people like Derby and Sheffield Wednesday, tight games, you need people like that in and around the camp to sort of instill the, the basics, you know, that come with um, that come with defending. Because I think defending is about basics. It's about not letting your, your striker win the header, the first ball. And if you win the first ball, win the second ball. And by the time you do that, you should have the ball and start going going forward instead of back. So that's Absolutely. how I see it. Head it, kick it, clear it. You're wasted on the cricket show, Brandon. Usually come across and do some proper, proper content. You've got some good opinions on him. Um, in fact, you probably, you probably could be hosting the cricket show, to be fair, because Rich is, you know. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I do agree. See, look at that for, look at that for a general, a number two look. Look at that for a yeah. Look at that for number oh, two. Oh, well, he's been, he's been trying to t- ditch me as he's number two for God knows how long, but he get knows you need me. Get back and have your lunch. Go on, get back and have your lunch. All right, uh, if you ever need me for some good football and points opposite Rich, because I know he sometimes he lacks them as well, just give me a call. <laughs> Love it. Brandon, great points. Your mum's in the draw, by the way, Brandon, for the uh, MK Dons game, mate. Thanks, mate. There you go. Good man, Brandon. Look at that. He's got some good opinions on him as Brandon, and he makes some great points as well, Rich. What about... One of the one of the funny things from last night that the ball's rolling out over our side. Cameron Burgess tries to keep it in. My I'm fucking. I, I sit there with my head in my hands sometimes, thinking these are professional footballers. You I've know, seen cruise liners move quicker. I have, oh, I, 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 to be fair, oh. I have, but yeah, I look, I can't disagree with anything he said there. No, 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 totally. He's- Nailed it, really. Yeah. I just it was really pleasing from my perspective to see Wolfie last night because. Under previous regimes, Richard Keogh coming in would have signalled somebody going out. Now it still could, of course. And I'm not, I'm not just talking a Corey and Darb alone. Uh, I'm talking a, you know, somebody being sold a Wolfie, a Fridge, or, or even a the Nation, whoever. So it was good from my perspective to, to see that Luke Wolfenden wasn't at Crystal Palace's training grounds <laughs> discussing personal terms. Yeah. Do you Look, think we, we... somebody will go out now? Because if Indaba Sounds... goes out on loan, that's kind of a waste of the experience. You took. You're saying you're bringing. Keo in for possibly look. Corey's not going to stay at the club, is he? That would be what six, six defenders we'll have. So yeah, look, we've got to pick three out of them anyway. So yeah. there's always going to be someone going to miss out if you have five on a match day because you're only going to probably have well, especially on your home games, you're only going to have one centre half, aren't you? Really on the on the bench. So it's interesting so. as well. Keo, obviously we play MK Saturday. He was at MK Martin. That's a good thing. To chat to Colin too about tonight, you know, just yeah, to see yeah. the thoughts see what, what he thought there. But um, I, I read that that piece in the Observer is a really good piece to read, and it said like when he had them troubles at Derby, then he's um, he employs a mind coach now as well. Oh, nice. Which he does, but um, I That's thought look, his interview on the club website, he spoke really well. He sounds like he's excited, you know. But we, it's it's it is a wait and see, I think. Mm, moving I forward agree. and seeing what's happening and then we're hoping that striker's going to be next and it surely come the end of the window there, there'll be another striker in in the door at Portman Road but it's you do it's keep signing players. it's like Matt, Matt said in the, uh, the, our chat this morning you know in the end Martin someone's going to have to go out because yeah. you keep signing players but nobody seems to have left yet no I don't just, well yeah You've got your Matt Penny's probably going to go. I'd have thought, um, like Elmis come on last night. I thought Elmis done all right. He only come on for ten minutes. I thought he he showed a little bit, but I don't think he's good enough. I don't think he's good enough. Rakeem the dream. Rakeem the nightmare for Twitter. The thing is, though, well, well, I'll talk about him. I'll talk about him more. Yeah, he's chat about him tonight. But interestingly, but, though, they've read, our manager and Richard Keo same age. Is that an interesting dynamic? Well, Kieran's the youngest. I think he's one of the youngest managers in the football league, isn't it? He's thirty-six, um, according to my quick Google search just now. Which yeah, Keo is thirty-six tomorrow, August the eleventh. His birthday tomorrow. is that tomorrow? Yep. Yeah, I, I see that. Um, many happy returns. Keezy, he likes to be called. All right, so another nickname there for the mm. ITFC admin when they're doing their Keezy. their stuff. But I think I think it's a it's a signing with little sort of um, risk, low risk signing. I think. It is a yeah. one year. It was. I think they said yesterday it was going to be a two year. But um, look, Sega Zombie there thinks Burgess might might move on. I know Matt Phillips thinks that Burgess might move on. I That'd don't know. Be a big loss, though, wouldn't it? When you're not going to really keep the three quarters of a million pounds that you, you, you spend. No, you're not going to. 
I, I like I like Burgess. I think he's he's got a role to play. Like they all have. It's going to be a long season, yeah. you know. There's going to be injuries. There's going to be injuries. There's going to be suspensions. Yeah, but you don't. Yeah, no, fair point. It's one. It's 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 a park it and see. Before I close, um, I've, we we are live tonight. So, hmm, not sure if we're live. But we're doing the away day guide tonight, seven thirty. Me and Colin. Uh, you'll see Colin this evening. Uh, the fisherman here. Get it live. Yeah. Yeah, I probably will get it live. I probably, I probably will. I just, I just don't want to oversaturate. You know, three shows in one day is is uh, we're easy. On the way, we're, we're over nine hundred thousand views on all the content now. We are racing towards a million. Wow. I know. I, I know. Million. I know one million yeah. views. Oh, I know. Wow. Um, That's big in town, not one million views. Come on, boys, yeah. keep up. You cre- we cre- we create the, the good times. Talking of good times. Yeah. What a that's a lovely, well, lovely just before, just before, look. The book's come. It has. It has. It absolutely has. Burning Shield. Come on, Mike. Get to Amazon. Can't wait to read it. <laughs> Mike, you've got two or three minutes because I, I do need to to, to 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 keep it nice and brief tonight. Um or today rather. Call it, uh, Mike, who the fuck are you? Mike. Talk Mike. to me. <laughs> Talk to me. What do you want to say? But I mean I've I'm a bit shocked about this signing, to be brutally honest. i uh, it doesn't fill me with confidence whatsoever. Unless we get a striker. If we get a striker in, there may be. But right now, I'm, I'll tell you, talking to my boy on the way home, speaking to a couple of mates this morning, we're all saying the same thing. At this rate, we're struggling to make the playoffs. We're not We're not creating enough. We're not doing enough. We've got, we got four points from two games, Mike. We've got four points from two games. We had one at this stage last season. Mike is very much the world is ending, unless, it, unless it's climate change, and then it's not. Okay. Oh, don't talk about climate let's, change, let's, Mike. Let's, let's look at who we, who we played. We played a League Two side last night, made up of our own players, right? And they and we had no way of breaking them down, Richard. We had, we had a player on there that shouldn't even be at the club. Richard. Raheem the Dream, I'm going to be player of the season. How did that work out? Do you know what I mean? I mean, no disrespect, but he shouldn't even be anywhere near the club. Oh, no, you mean this. You, you do mean disrespect. That, <laughs> two minutes before he'd done that, right, my boy said to him, he's going to cost us. Boom. Two minutes later, suicide pass, That's bang, football. one nil down. That's and then from that point onwards, it was a, it was 10 men behind the ball by one striker. And uh, we were again, we couldn't break him down. And, I will come to Ricky tonight, Mike. What about Richard Keogh? He is the one in the door. Is he the answer? Look, the only, I said last night, the only positive I can think of is he's coming. You know, if, if he's starting ahead of our other players, what's that saying about our other players? Because but it could be your man, Denashian, Mike, that, that isn't oh, in the behave. team. behave. You're just trying to draw me into something now. Behave. Look, honestly. I think <laughs> he I started it. No, 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 no. You're talking crap. Yeah, at the end of the day, John <laughs> came was... Was arguably player of the season last year. If you, if you, if you, you know, I knew, I knew right. straight away you were going to come out with that. I mean, it's oh my days. I didn't. That, wasn't my, that, wasn't, that was just what I see on social media, Mike. No, I knew me. you'd ask me about it. You're sods. You really are. Um, but, <laughs> but look, look. The end of the day is he bring. Look, I can't argue with some of the points being made that he is an experienced defender. Um, I did take issue with a guy, a guy who came on, the faceless guy who came on earlier. Calling Mowbray a rose Z hoof it. The lad ain't got a clue about Lloyd. football. No, he thinks no, Mowbray no. was a hoof it. Well, Lloyd is younger than than myself, and I was on well, the back yeah, end clearly. of Mowbray. Maybe you should go back and watch some of the YouTube videos with Mowbray then. It's all about uh, opinions, but, Mike. It is. And I, and I, is, you, you have an opinion based on what you know, not on what you think you know. No, no, no. I'll defend Lloyd here. To be fair to him, nah, I'd no, hardly no, called, I, I wouldn't be calling Tony Mowbray a ball plan defender. Well, he's hardly a hoofman defender, is he? Not under Burley. Oh, come on. I'm but he was hardly that. a ball you player don't know either. Burley anyway. No, no, I'm not his biggest no, fan. Exactly. No, exactly. How can you not like the, one of the best managers we've had in this club? Oh, in bloody Premier nonsense. League? I mean, come on, behave. Talking about 800 attempts, Mike. Oh, behave. We were the only strong team in that league back then. My God, alive. Brought right. in one of the best strikers at the club, Mark Stewart. Got us promoted that season. Mike, Four bottoms of the apart in the playoffs. Mike, I mean, come on. Mike, it's 2022. Back in the room. Richard Keogh. Uh, Kieran McKenna is the manager. And George Burley sat in the director's box. 
are you if if the window slams shut and Ashton and Co can't get a deal over the line for the ten for the striker for for both? How are you going to feel looking at our body of work right now in the transfer window? Mid table. <sighs> mid table. Well, we were we were Absolutely. last year. Mid table. We are not going to bang in the goals like like, like uh, me and Rich both had Peterborough in the top top two. Why? Because look at the firepower. Mm. Clean sheets doesn't win your games. Scoring goals win your games. That's the whole idea of bloody football in the first place. Yeah, I, I won't say who, but somebody did message me last night to, to say something a little bit similar in that we won't be getting promoted this year. So, um, you know, you're not, you're not the only person who's, who, who is if feeling we, if that. If we don't, I'm telling you, all them nice players that we have got will be going and they'll go to, they'll go to other clubs. Fair enough. Fair enough. Mike, I appreciate you coming on. You're always a passionate man. We do like that oh, at Talking Town. Yeah, Look I know after you do. You like, you like pressing my buttons, don't you? you no, I never, <laughs> never, never, never. I just wanted to ask the question about, about his man, Danassian. That was all. I had a uh, seven-minute, 41 voice clip from Mike this morning. Seven minutes? Seven wow. minutes, 41 seconds. I love listening to Mike. I go in the shower, I put him on the side, and then I listen to him while I'm washing myself. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a development I didn't really want uh, to know. Listen, to like Carl life. says there, clean sheets doesn't lose your game. Scoring goals can. Yeah, I agree. But we do need to. We know we need to score more goals. We, we need to be more clinical, but I think it's a case of wait and see, Martin. It's still the middle of August. There's still time. <laughs> Look, a lot of these teams in not just our league higher leagues and that and League Two, they're still wanting two or three players. And you, you, a lot of teams look, I did say two or three weeks ago, a lot of squads will look totally different. It's Some of these transfers, there's different moving parts, isn't there, you know? One goes and yeah. then it's like yeah. a chain, chain reaction and then it all sort of... So if it is Hurst, mm. which I think probably 90% mm. is probably going to be, I've not really heard anybody else, but then we didn't hear anything about Richard Keogh and he's coming. No, 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 this is it. This is it. Yeah. Um uh, Rob Duckett, a good signing, brings some more experience in the back line, but we really do need a proven striker. Sega, you need the firepower to get out of League One. There's evidence to see of those clubs that have got promoted. Maybe Aston uh, needs to plug his dashboard into Peterborough's transfer computer. Bob Lockhart, one of our YouTube members, last night's result, not important. We can afford injuries. We can't afford, sorry, injuries. Uh, oh, no, sorry, we can afford injuries. I don't like that. I don't want team. people saying, oh, it's not important. It's it's a wrong mentality, Bob, to have that. It's about winning football matches. I said earlier in the think- show, man. I agree with you, but I think when people, when, when when people like like Bob, you know, share that opinion, like Josh Russell was the same on our Discord, it, they're protecting themselves basically. They they're protecting themselves from the disappointment of n- losing a game. Uh, and last night you see a lot of a lot of nonsense on social media about oh yeah. overreaction, flouncing. If you're not upset at your team losing a game of football, a competitive game of football, are you even a fan? Like you've got to be upset, yeah. surely. You've got to. It's got, like, it bothered me last night getting into bed that we'd lost a game of football because of my club. I want my club to win every game of football. Yeah, we're a bit of a laughing stock when it comes to cups. Oh, there we go. Out in the first round again. Just add to the Newport, I think Carlisle, Crawley, Exeter, you know, all these massive football mm. clubs who've beaten us in. And these players coming in, and I, I know it's hard for them, Martin, when they're just cobbled together, you know, they've. When you make two or three changes, I, look, I, I do agree with what David said. Great to have David Fisher on, by the way, last night. Um, I do agree with what he says. It does disrespect the competition, but it's it's just not town who do it. It's everybody. You know, I think there was, what was it, 10 yeah. championship clubs went out last night in the first round? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blackpool went out to Barrow, didn't they? Yeah, so Which we've got, big shot. got higher aspirations. I know that. it's The league's got to be number one priority. But I, I like to think it's breeding that winning mentality and we've not had that in a long time it's when? momentum when, when, as well yeah winning games we never let the the, the the train get full steam ahead because we always hit the buffer you know next week let, let's let's say we beat mk dons then we've got in northampton in the cup before we lose there so again it, it's that big mo it's momentum as a football club you want to start look at bolton last night absolutely smashing salford in the next week absolutely yeah. destroyed them 4-1 um but i think bob is very similar to me. I will tell myself, ah, oh, it's only the cup. Because I'll yeah, we, I'm I'm try to tell yourself that, but it's still a game that you 
Oh, it bothers me, but I'm, you try and tell yourself, oh, it's just a cut. tell everybody. Just... Last night when Cole Scoose came off and we all stood there, give him a little round of applause. This man here, that's how he sat. Not a chance, mate. <laughs> I'm not a hypocrite. I spent seven years slating Scuse and Chambers. I'm not now going to be a hypocrite and, and pretend. Who was the left back for Colchester last I night? I don't know, but he was incredible. He, Best he player had, on the pitch. He had Wes Burns Best in his back player. pocket when he yeah. came on. That's Best what makes player. it worse from my perspective. The fact that Cole U fans today can say they beat Ipswich and we put, they even put their big guns on and they still couldn't do anything. Well, That's what bothers me the most. Yeah. Good luck. Because I'd rather they sat on the bench didn't, and then come on and we lost. Then, then you know, give, the, give them that, that, that ability. Anyway, we're back tonight. Uh, 8.30 for Talking Towns Match Day Preview. More Colchester reaction. We'll look ahead to MK Dons. Another big game on the horizon. Richard Keogh, seventh signing in the door. Until uh, tonight, with love, with care, we see you all on the other side. You make me smile when I think of you. If I down you Crazy from just the thought of you